In today's video, we have a sickly little Subaru sandbar that just refuses to run. So guys, today we've got a 1996 Subaru Sandbar KS4. This is a high roof version. Haven't seen one of these in person before. My previous two were standard cabs. And the issue is that it just does not want to run. Now, I had a lengthy conversation with the owner when they dropped it off about what's been done and what hasn't. And I've kind of forgotten a lot of what's been done, but the carburetor's been messed with. I believe the ignition system a bit. We've got some parts. We've got a time belt water pump and stuff to do to it once we figure out why it's not running and get it back running. Uh, but here's what we've got right now. We've got a crank and no start. So when talking about issues with a vehicle not starting, not running, there's two different classifications. There is a no crank, no start, and there is a crank, no start. So this is a crank, no start. Crank no start is because the engine will physically crank over with the starter. When you turn the key, it just will not run. Or the other option is when you turn the key, absolutely nothing happens. So this is a crank no start. Now, first things first, we need to get off the tow bar that they have added to this sandbar so we can get the engine compartment door open and we need to go ahead and take the top engine compartment handle off. All right, guys, so it looks like you have to quick disconnect the rear engine cover rather than remove that tow bar because it is bolted and welded in. But we have access to the front or top of the engine. Uh, we also have access to technically the side of the engine because the valve cover or rocker cover is going that way. Uh, we see new solenoid on the carburetor. Uh, some nuts and bolts have been turned, vacuum line replaced. Uh, I believe he said that the fuel filter and fuel pump had been replaced. We're gonna pull that line off, turn the key on, and see if we get a prime of fuel. What are the three things you need for an engine to run? You know those, and it is compression, time to spark, and fuel. So that's what we're gonna check. We're gonna start off checking our fuel system, and we're gonna check for spark at our spark plugs. And uh, if we've got spark or we've got fuel, then we're gonna have a compression issue, but it doesn't sound like it. So I'm guessing we're probably got a fueling issue here but uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So guys, I uh, took the fuel feed line from the fuel pump to the carburetor loose here. The key is on. We should have the pump down here running and priming up the system, but it's not. And I think I found part of our problem because if I reach down in here and wiggle the wires, our pump will start running and we start to get fuel. So we've got an issue with our fuel pump uh, for starters, and then uh, once we get that figured out, we'll see if it runs or if uh, there's more to it than that. Well, we're running now. So we're ahead of the game. The car or the truck is running, idling. Doesn't sound great. So we're probably going to have to do some adjusting on the carburetor and uh, maybe tweak the ignition, check the ignition system still, and uh, go from there. I'm assuming we're burning a little bit of oil from uh, the car sitting or the truck sitting. I keep saying car. Uh, likely has some valve stem seals that are leaking a little bit of oil in the combustion chamber and that oil is now burning out. But uh, we'll let it run, warm up, and uh, we'll try to adjust the idle and get it dialed in. So our idle is really high right now and it's getting progressively higher as the engine warms up. So we need to go ahead and adjust that down. We'll go ahead and get the timing light out and make sure our timing's right. And uh, then we'll adjust this down to about 800 RPM idle. Unfortunately, I don't have a tachometer on me, so I'm gonna have to do it kind of by ear. All right, so we've got our idle speed down a bit. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run this till we're up to operating temperature. I'm gonna get the timing light out. We're gonna check our timing on the distributor if we need to advance or retard it. And uh, once we get to halfway mark to uh, the correct uh, operating temperature, we'll go ahead and make our final calibration by ear to around 800 RPM idle speed. All right, guys, so the car is up and running. It's at operating temperature. I've got a tool out that I rarely ever use. This is a 1960s. I think it's a, uh, let's see, 1965, according to the serial number, time of light from my dad. And we're gonna adjust the timing. I think it's a little bit uh, retarded right now. 
it's hard to see. This is a 96, so it's got an EGR pipe in here. The uh, ones I had in the past did not have EGR. So what we gotta do is point this flashing little time and light down here at the harmonic balancer or the crank pulley. And there's a notch and a light. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to show you this, but uh, we're gonna shine it right down in there on that pointer. And uh, you'll see a little line up here and we need to get it close to that pointer by loosening the bolts on the distributor and turning the housing back and forth to line that timing mark up. I've done another video on this in the past on the sandbar that's a little bit better shot and more uh, uh, involved than uh, what I'm doing right here, but this is, uh, you know, diagnosing a crank nose start and getting it dialed in so we can go ahead and clean it up and do the time belt water pump job that originally uh, needed in the first place before it was a uh, crank no start. So guys, we've had the vehicle running for about 30 minutes now. I think I've pretty much got the timing and the carburetor dialed in. Uh, we turned the AC on and made sure that the AC kicker kicked on and idled the engine up and it did to keep it from stalling when the AC uh, compressor clutch kicked in and it disengaged as you would expect. So it looks like we're all good there. Now we can go through and uh, perform the timing belt water pump replacement. I think we uh, have maybe a rocker cover gasket, which it needs it. Probably needs an ignition tune up. I'm not sure how old the components are here in the uh, distributor and the spark plugs, but uh, seems that the little truck is running really well. And uh, there's how you do a uh, crank no start diagnosis. You need the three things. You need compression, you need time spark, and you need fuel. Without those, you're not gonna have a running engine. And we went through and we're able to quickly and easily figure out that the source of our issue was that little fuel pump back there having a bad electrical connection and not feeding fuel to the carburetor from the gas tank. So guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up here and we'll probably do a separate video on the time about water pump replacement. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.